Hello everybody, here I am about to hit the beach. I'm uh, getting ready to go out. The weather outside, it's kind of raining out there, but that's not going to stop me. Uh, I just did, thought this morning, uh, I have three metal detectors currently. I've had many in the first year I've been metal detecting. Uh, partly I wanted to see which ones I liked best. I didn't just want to go what I heard um, on, on the internet. I wanted to see which ones I liked. I didn't try them all out. I, of course, I used some of the great information on the internet, and I want to thank everybody for posting it. Uh, as you can see here, I'm holding the uh, Excalibur. I just got it back. It was actually in the shop. I've heard a lot of... Uh, horror stories about the Excalibur. Uh, this is a mind lab machine. Uh, basically what people say about the Excalibur is it's a great machine when it's working. And I don't think the issue is with the Excalibur. Uh, the reason why I think there's so many people uh, that have issues with the Excalibur is so many people have one and so many people use one. So the more people that have it, the more people use it. Obviously, the more people that might have some problems with it. Uh, same thing with uh, something like the AT Pro, which I have over there if I use for my land machine. Even though it's a waterproof machine, I'm not near lakes. I live near the ocean, and the AT Pro in the ocean, the salt water, uh, don't do as well as in, in it does in a lake. Uh, but I really don't go in lakes with that. I use that for the land pretty much. But again, there's a lot of negative or, or, or problems people have with the AT Pro. But again, because so many people have that. The more popular a machine is popular for a reason, whether it's the price, whether it's to how good it works, or a combination of both. So the more people that have a machine, the more it's going to break down. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately, I had just finished uh, right before my one year anniversary with my Excalibur. I was having some problems in, in the headphone. And I looked and I was so excited because it was just one year. So the warranty was still good. And uh, they fixed the earphone. They actually uh, gave me some uh, new knobs. It was about a one month it was out. They told me it would be about three weeks when I, when I brought it into the uh, shop where I bought it uh, to send it and get it back. It was about a month's time. And I, I really didn't miss it at all. Reason being because uh, I picked up another machine just as a backup, never really thinking I'd, I'd use it much or I never had a chance to use it much because I just love my, my AT Pro, um, my, my Excalibur here and I never really needed a, a reason to use anything else. But I did pick one up just in case and so when my AT Pro was down, I had to use my backup. And my backup is my Surfmaster PI by Whites. Now this has been replaced with the Dual Field, which is the much uh, later model, the Dual, fi dual Field. Uh, White's uh, PI and a PI is a pulse machine. If you're new to metal detecting, pulse is a little different. Uh, the Excalibur is a VLF, what they call, and the, v the Excalibur discriminates if you have it on the discrimination uh, knob. This is a knob here that says pinpoint and discriminate. If you keep it on pinpoint, it's going to pick up all metals. But the reason why it's a discriminating machine is you have an option to discriminate. Now, pinpointing, some people say, is a little bit deeper. Uh, and it very well is, but still, you're going to be picking up everything. But for, for discrimination, it, it's great. It does a wonderful job, like I said. But I got this Pulse machine just to check it out and see how it was. And I was warned you're going to have to pick up everything because they don't have a, a discrimination uh, model and, or, or mode on there. And I'll tell you, I love this machine so much. I was really excited. I got it real inexpensive on Craigslist. The reason I loved it was even though it was a Pulse machine and I would still pick up a couple of bobby pins and things like this that I wouldn't have gotten with my Excalibur, uh, the beaches that I'm on near me are not that dirty. And when I'm in the water, uh, there's even less dirt. So I can go out for an hour with this and maybe hit three or four targets that I wouldn't have hit with this uh, Excalibur machine. Now, if I go to more crowded beaches or, or that are more dirty and more junk, uh, I would have gotten a lot more junk and a lot more uh, issues with this, and a pulse might not have been good to use. The deeper you get in the water, of course, uh, the less issue you're going to have with picking up uh, junk targets. However, you know, you are still going to dig up things that you won't dig with the, this, and that's a good and bad thing because the Excalibur, you, it passes up the junk, but you know what? I have found this Pulse machine and to be much deeper, even in discrimination mode on the VLF. And some people actually say it's just about the same. Well, I can't speak for other people. I guess each machine has its differences and, and they might be different a little. But from my experience, the Pulse, White's Pulse machine here, uh, the Surfmaster, is a good amount deeper than uh, Excalibur. That's just been my experience and other people's experience might be different. 
Uh, now, here's one thing, though, about the Excalibur. I'm going to tell you this. I shouldn't be saying this, but I am going to say it uh, because I'm, gonna, I'm looking for another one of these, by the way. I actually just saw a guy on the beach not too long ago, and he was using the exact same machine. And he's been doing this, he said, for 30 years, and he's found very little better than this machine. I did have a problem, or I do have a problem, with the White's dual field, uh, the new one, the newer model, and that is the coil. You see, the coil on here, this is a Pulse Diver 950. It's actually uh, the old, uh, it's not a dual field, but it's, uh, it's a Surf Master. And you see the coil, it's pretty, it's, you know, not too big, it's a good size, and, and, and it's nice, I like it. But the problem is White now has a, uh, and the coil cover comes off very easy on this. I like to take the coil off and, and when I wash it just to get the sand out. The problem is with the new dual field, which actually I hear is even deeper than this machine, is, uh, and that's exciting to know. The problem is they're using a big coil on the machine and that big coil has a tendency to float in the water. So it doesn't stay down as well. And uh, so that's an issue I would have because I had a Beach Hunter ID which has the same coil and I had that issue. So yes, even though it's probably one of the deepest pulse machines out there from what I heard, uh, it, it's, you have that issue with the coil. Uh, and another issue with that coil on that machine is, uh, on the newer coil for the White's machine, is that coil cover is really hard to get off. I mean, 15, 20 minutes we're talking about if you don't break it. It's, it's not easy to get off. All in all, uh, I think one day I will invest in a dual field uh, because I just found it so deep and so nice. I just got to get used to dealing with that coil. If any of you out there watching has the dual field, the, the White's dual field machine, uh, let me know what you think of the coil. Do you get used to it or not? Uh, another thing here, which I was going to do is on my Excalibur, I have a straight shaft by a plugger. And I love that straight shaft. It really helps uh, the weight. It balances it really well. And I would not recommend the Excalibur with the, with the a stock shaft, which is the S-shape, uh, because it's just really uncomfortable and it doesn't balance well. Uh, so I got this, uh, this straight shaft and it does a great job. Now, uh, Plugger and there's other people that make it as well, I, uh, that make these straight shafts and some people make themselves, uh, really do help. But now here's the thing. The... Uh, the Pulse machine that I have, again, I bought this used on Craigslist, and it's, it's, it's not the straight shaft. So I was thinking of getting a straight shaft for this one, but again, because of this coil, I don't know if it's a coil or what the reason is, but it balances pretty well, even with the stock shaft. And since it's a backup, I have not gotten uh, the straight shaft yet. Uh, maybe if I find a couple more rings, I'll go ahead and invest in one. But I'm just liking the way it feels really much, so much so... I mean, in certain situations, I might even make this dual field, or not dual field, the Surfmaster PI, I might make this my backup, I mean my original, and use the Excalibur as the backup. And that might sound crazy to some people, but again, my beach isn't that dirty. Uh, but this morning, I took the Excalibur out and it was nice. I was able to go on a dry sand with it, which is pretty hard because the beach is pretty dirty. So it's pretty hard to do that with the Pulse machine. Uh, I have a good success in, in a wet sand with the Pulse machine, but again, you're picking up a lot more than you normally would if you were using the Excalibur. Uh, all in all, I've used a good amount of beach machines uh, since I've been doing this hobby now for the last year or so. And I've read a lot on it. And from my experience, these are the best beach machines out there. And I can make some more videos, and I already have some of the videos discussing why, but the Excalibur and the Surfmaster PI, uh, these are my two favorite machines, and I'm very glad I had them. Uh, ultimately, these are for the water, and let me correct it and say the best water machines. I did have a Sovereign GT, which I absolutely loved, and it was by far just an amazing, wonderful machine for the dry sand. And you can get in the water with it, but I always had to worry about uh, a wave hitting me, and I didn't like that. Um, but on the dry sand, I don't think there's anything better than uh, Sovereign GT. Again, that's just been my experience. I did sell my Sovereign GT recently because I was, using, I was, I was getting in the water so much and uh, I would take the Excalibur if I wanted to do dry sand just to go back and forth from the dry to the water. Uh, and I had it for a backup, but I thought I can't really use it as a backup because so I can't really get in the water as much with it. Uh, I was kind of regretting selling it when I sold it, but I just thought I, ha I wouldn't have been able to use it anyway because uh, I haven't been out as much as I'd like and when I do go out it's been nice. I'm actually heading right now. It's been raining but the sun's coming out and it's low tide so I'm on my way to the beach 
but yeah, the Excalibur, uh, I mean the Sovereign GT is a wonderful dry machine, dry sand machine. Now my AT Pro uh, does the good in the dry sand as well, but on the wet sand, nothing's going to beat the Sovereign GT on the wet sand. Now they don't make the Sovereign GT anymore, you could still find it new in a couple of places, but you might be able to find it on Craigslist or eBay or something. Uh, just be careful if you're buying it from those places because it's a used machine. And when everybody uses machine, you gotta have some prayer that it's gonna be okay. But my AT Pro does good in the dry sand. Honestly, I don't even take my AT Pro to the beach really because I got these wonderful machines. I do go and take the AT Pro in parks. I'll do another video about that and different coils on the AT Pro. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. I am on the way to the beach. I am excited to go and it's gonna be good. I got a good spot to go to. So until then, everybody, put your comments, question below, and uh, keep on surfing.